Hey, welcome back. So I found myself staring at the edges of this uh, fairy fountain, trying to figure out what the heck is going on. Um, you can see along here, there's these kind of rounded stones going on. When we get into these corners here, there's a little bit of a funny ledge. Uh, you can see that right, I'm just going to put the sword on it, right about there. Uh, there's these funny kind of transitions between the diagonal stones and the straight stones. I don't know if that's some kind of a limitation, like it might be a hardware thing, but it seems kind of obvious, you know, looking back over the years. There's some, there's some, uh, maybe taboo or, <laughs> you know, some things that might not be done in a current game of this same style. Okay, so that aside, here we are, Fairy Fountain. Um, this is just outside of the, uh, the desert. And we're going to keep going. Okay, so I'm going to go um, back to the north here. I now have the uh, strength gloves from that previous dungeon that I was in. So I can pick up these great big stones. Pretty handy. But basically any of those gray stones I can pick up now. So that means if I'm coming up through here, um, there'll be a handful of stones I can pick up along the way. Oh, can I get the bee? I can. Let's catch a bee. All right. I'm sure that'll come in handy later on. Okay, so I want to probably pick up some arrows in here. And go through this little room one time. Let's see if I can stock up a little bit before we head up the mountain. So there's a lot of that, um, you know, that old fashioned kind of texturing going on, especially in this area, you can see. You know, these little flowers, they, they look gloriously animated, one or, you know, one or two on their own look really pretty, right? But when you start having these pulsating fields of these, you know, white flowers, it looks a little bit off-putting. Same kind of a thing with this guy here. Um, you can see the two-color uh, top on this little tree, and it looks okay, you know, for the time period it was pretty good, um, but nowadays with the, the texturing and the, the, the standards have really changed. I can see some jaggies actually on the edge of that too there, if we look in the, the edges of those trees. Okay, uh, something I haven't touched on in this one um, is the fortune teller's house. Basically you can go and pay this guy. And he'll tell you the next thing that you need to do to progress the story here. Hocus Pocus, you will meet Zora living in a lake at the river's source. I'll take 30 bucks. Yeah. So what he's talking about is the flippers there. We need 500 rupees to go and get the flippers. Okay, so I'm actually going to take a pit stop here. Uh, and head through the graveyard. Pick up a couple of stones. And we're gonna head back into the castle actually through this uh, this gravestone here. Oh, it's a push one. There's a couple that are pushed and a couple that are uh, dash. So this probably looks familiar. We're back in the uh, the escape section of the dungeon in the castle here. It's the, the basement of the castle. Oh look, there's some arrows too. Alright, so this guy's suggesting that I go and uh, talk to the Zora. I think that's probably a good idea, considering I'm independently wealthy now. <laughs> 700 rupees. Rat room. See if I can bomb the rats. Oh, it's snakes. 
Why did it have to be snakes? I thought it was going to be green bombs. That really actually surprised me. Oh well. Hey guys. I'm like, how did you get in there? <laughs> I was robbing a grave. Alright, there's another stop up here. Oh! I hit that guy with the boomerang. So just over on this side here, we have another... These five... Uh, five stone piles here we can bash into as well. And break them. Um, piece of heart! <laughs> Two now. There is, I think, another one coming up. Not sure if I'll hit a fourth one on this run. Actually, come to think of it, yeah, we will too. There is going to be a fourth one when we get up to the top of the mountain there. Cool. Okay, so we're almost there to the uh, the Zara's domain. This electric blob, guys. And I don't have any magic powder yet. <laughs> when we get the magic powder, finally, there's a funny thing that those guys do. Okay, so I'm gonna head up this way. This tiny little entrance that leads to this great big water area. I'm gonna walk through here as fast as I can. Pretty sure we're going to the far the bottom one here. Oh. There we go. Looking good. And there's the giant Zora. Wahaha, ha, ha. what do you want, little man? Do you have something to ask me? <laughs> I just want the flippers. Wahahaha, <laughs> but I don't just give flippers away for free. I sell them for 500 rupees a pair. So you mean to say that everybody here can just make 500 rupees and come and buy some flippers? Yep. Okay, so I'm heading down here. There's going to be a third piece of heart over here. And then when I get to Death Mountain here, there's going to be another one. Uh, um, just underneath Spectacle Rock, I believe. But first, this. Okay, so there's this mysterious pond. And I'm going to throw my boomerang in there. Yes, I did drop this. I like on a person. I'll give you something better in return. Okay, cool. So now I got the red boomerang, which goes a lot further, a lot faster than the uh, the blue boomerang. Uh, you can also throw the potion bottle in there. If you've got an empty potion bottle, uh, and she'll give you a green potion. Right now, that's not super significant, uh, seeing as though we're running along with... Oh, actually, you know what? I think I can hop over here. We're running along with very uh, limited magic powers right now. There's not really anything. That kind of becomes more significant later on, though. Okay, so I'm going to go up this here. Yep, yeah, there we go. Time for the mountain. I'm 
<laughs> Let's alert everybody. Bees. <laughs> we heard you like bees. Oh dear. Yeah, let's just go in the cave. <laughs> I thought I could smash them all with that great big rock. There's a section there's no going back here. I got this tiny, tiny little light in the great big dungeon room. And there's an old man. I don't know who you are, but if you're going up to the mountain... Uh, if you're going up the mountain, will you take me with you? I've lost my lamp. So... Yeah, can't stop him from following us, I guess. Uh, watch your step. There's holes in the ground. Could you turn right here? Young man, are you also looking for the... Uh, oh, are you also going to the mountain to look for the golden power? Just ahead is a mountain full of monsters. Many people have vanished in this mountain while looking for the golden power. I don't want to steer you wrong, so please don't get too involved in such a mad quest. So if we listen to this dude and we turn right, we're going to walk down into a, a pit, basically. But if we continue heading straight... Which does happen to be right on the screen, oddly enough. Now, uh, turn right here. You know I have a granddaughter who is your age. The king took her to the castle and she never returned. Kidnapping those maidens must be part of the wizard's plot. I'm sure he's trying to somehow use the power of the descendants of the wise men. What do you know about the, uh, the wizard guy? Somehow this guy's in on the, uh, the assassination plot. Little old hermit guy. Whoa. Many too many things there. The missing maidens are still alive somewhere. I believe that a hero will rescue them. I wait for that day. Uh, these are dangerous times. I talk too much. Anyway, thank you for your kindness to an old man like me. Uh, I wanted to give you this. Uh, if you wander into a magical transporter, gaze into this mirror. He gave you the magic mirror. And he made sure I got hit by a devastating big rock. I'm gonna go in there, and that old dude's gonna let me rest up here, I think. The wizard has deceived the king, and now he's trying to open the way to the dark world. To complete your quest, you know about my quest? You'll need the moon pearl, which is in the tower on the top of the mountain. All I can do for you now is to comfort your weariness. Come back here any time. Awkward. Okay, so I'm gonna uh, rush up the side here, fast as I can, get past all these green rocks. Oh, there's a big one. That door back there is the uh, the rear entrance to that old man's house. Gonna head up here. And now we're up on top of the mountain. Um, I forget which one I need to jump down. I think I'm gonna jump into this one. Ouch. Mini mold arms. Ooh. A red one. Uh, and that was the wrong one, of course. Yeah, we need to go in the bottom one. That's too bad. Those things move, like, absolutely randomly. Unlike most of the enemies, like, most of the other enemies in the game, they wiggle around somehow that you can kind of, like, anticipate the way that they're going to attack you or, you know, the, mo the motion that they have. There will be a break in the movement that they can easily be, you know, hit in, in a certain moment. But those guys, they, they constantly move, and they move in a random direction. So very difficult to nail them while they're running around. Okay, so we're back in the same vicinity here, but we're going to pick up this piece of heart. And for giggles, let's talk to the old man. Link at his eyes, a hasrala. Uh, you must somehow make your way to the top of Spectacle Rock. From there, you can reach the Tower of Hera on the top of Death Mountain. Okay, and I think there's some way to walk across this, but I don't know. That's okay, I don't need to go over there anyway. Ah. 
Got him. Back up this ridiculous long staircase here. And we're about to go into the uh, the dark world for the first time here. So here's the magical warper. And Link is now a bunny rabbit. A couple of crazy guys sitting up here. I like them specifically um, because of their character. Both of these things have such character. You can see these guys running around. There's this one little guy who's a ball. And the other guy is this little demon monster guy. And in this scenario where you're now, like, I can't, I can't use anything. I can use this mirror. I can use my map. I can see that there's this huge world and it's all dark and mysterious. If I hadn't played this game before, I'd probably be like, oh my god, what just happened, you know? But in this scenario, there's no threat. It's just this awesome moment for like the the world building that's going on here, where these guys are like, hey, there's a there's a monster, and there's this little soft guy who's getting the heck kicked out of him, and they both talk a lot, so I'm avoiding touching them. Okay, so this is some um, spectacle rock. It's quite the um, spectacle, I suppose. Looks like a pair of glasses, but still, there's another piece of heart. And way up here, um, if we head over this way, there's a, a stone here. This is kind of interesting that you get exposed to this tablet first. Hold up the Master Sword and you will get the Magic of Aether. Uh, I got a sword. It's not the Master Sword, though. It's my uncle's sword. I want to actually knock that guy out. So here we are. Level 3. This is the Tower of Hera. So there's these um, previous two dungeons that we've encountered here. They have uh, the first one, the, the Eastern Palace there. There was only, uh, really it was just a flat level. There weren't really many puzzles. There wasn't a lot going on um, in terms of like difficult you know, obstacles or crazy monsters or anything like that. In level two, um, in the desert, the stuff that we fought there was a little bit more challenging. Um, the way that we were encountering uh, the dungeon was different. It was there was puzzles going on. There was some difficult monsters to fight. You know, the basics were pretty much covered in those first two dungeons. We even had a tile room like this. But this level really brings it all together and gives you a taste of what's coming up, right? You really get a challenge. You have to think about it in a spatial manner to be able to navigate the dungeon. Um, there's puzzles, there's monsters, there's just everything here in level three. There's also these friggin' crystal switches, man. <laughs> what a headache. Okay, so I can go in here. I got Moldarm number one. And I'll ignore Maldon 2 and 3, and come in with my little lantern. Ignore those skeletons. And I've already got the big key. I've got the big key and the map already. Um, I'm going to go for the boomerang. Fill up my magic powder again. Oh, whoops. Thank God those tiles don't just replicate themselves and sit back in position there. I have to, I hate to have to fight them going in and out of that room. It takes forever. Okay, and then here I'm gonna hit that switch before I go in. Let's see how that serves me. Uh, these guys, there's some fancy tech for this room. But again, I'm not a pro. Oh, and I fall down the hole. 
Oh well, I can walk back up there. I think those guys are probably gone too. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I remember um, in the previous episode I was having a hard time recalling the names of the um, the pink guys that uh, I can use magic powder to turn into fairies. And originally I thought they were called anti-fairies, uh, but they're not. They're not actually listed in the, the monster set. I'm sure they have a name. Um, I had looked up the monsters and they weren't actually shown in there. So, I'm just going to call them the Anti-Fairies. In other games, they're referred to as Anti-Fairies. Uh, those little red guys are annoying, too. Later on, there's a nastier green version, too. Okay, so here we are. Um, I think I'm going to take a detour here. Oh my goodness. Switch this one up. Uh, and I'm going to go in this uh, this middle chamber here. This drop hole here. Dee -dee -dee -dee. So I got the moon pearl. That means that uh, I will no longer be a fuzzy rabbit when I get through this dungeon uh, and go back to the dark world. It means that I can be uh, Link again. Yeah, I think this is the one I need to go down to. All the way down. <laughs> oh, my knees. No. Nothing that bad. Okay, so I'm gonna eat one of them and catch another one. And head back to the top. Alright, that worked out pretty well. Uh, now... Actually, I need to hit that uh, switch down one floor from here before I start this fight. Oh, it's not one floor down. Screw it. Let's do it. I thought it was going to be an easy switch to hit. I just go and hit it, and then um, all these vases would be open. But uh, yeah, I don't get. Apparently, I don't get health for this fight. I have to test my metal against the giant Moldorm. So this guy is like a triple threat. He'll do good damage if he hits you. Uh, and he will also knock you down. If you're not quick to hit the opposite direction when he knocks you into the edge. There, I got him. First try. And the third pendant. Yeah, I remember trying for hours to beat this guy the first time I played this game. The first couple monsters are pretty hard, the, but this guy, like, just because he knocks you off that ledge, it just becomes so much more difficult, so much more annoying. Ugh. Oh. Bash my head on a rock. Leap down a giant cliff, why not? Okay. So in here, we have to go and find a little door. Yep, and then there's a very long tunnel here. I'm gonna try my luck and run down the edge. Oh, and I fell in the hole. <laughs> not lucky. Today you'll have bad luck. No. Play it safe rather than sorry that time. And we just casually come out 
right next to the the woods here. And what do we got? Okay, so I'm gonna head through the stump, hop in here and pick up another piece of heart. This guy's, like, telling a story of some kind. Hey, kid, this is a secret hideout for a gang of thieves. Don't enter without permission. By the way, I heard that one of our ex-members is staying at the entrance to the desert. You're ratting out your buddy, eh? Okay, so my next location here... One of the more important stops in the game. Picking up the magic mushroom. On my way to having magic powder. Well, I guess that guy decided it wasn't worth it. I mean, uh, yeah, usually they fly towards you and they'll like charge until they either hit you or get hit. That guy kind of turned around and ran away. Okay, so just for the lore, uh, the hero's triumph on Cataclysm's Eve wins three symbols of virtue. The Master Sword, he will then retrieve, keeping the Knight's line true. Okay. That sword looks so badass on the pedestal. <laughs> and then when you take it, it's like, yeah. <laughs> I got a balloon. <laughs> However, it is a considerable upgrade from the first sword. Uh, this one will shoot lasers too. Suddenly, Saharasla. Saharasala. Saharasrala? Wow, I've been saying it wrong the whole time. I think everybody says that wrong. Uh, con contacts you telepathically. Link at his eye. Uh, it is extraordinary that you won the Master Sword that makes evil retreat. With this Shining Sword, I believe you can deflect the wizard's evil powers. What's that mean? The destiny of this land is in your hands. Please, Link. Uh, continue. Please, Link. Ow. Link, help! The soldiers are coming to Sanctuary. Aye! Dot, dot, dot. Uh, what do I do? Okay, so I'm gonna head back the way I came. Oh, there's another mushroom. <laughs> when in fact it's the same mushroom. This is not the way I came. Can I get out this way, I wonder? That I can. Okay, so I got the level 2 sword. Uh, the master sword. That means these guys are going to go down in one hit now. It also has another uh, benefit in that it shoots lasers if you get full health. Uh, I'm not going to eat my fairy. It's not that super strong. Oh. I will, however, stop to pick up a heart if it happens by. Hey, now I got sword lasers. Nice. Okay, so I'm actually not going to Sanctuary in case you have, you know, just missed what I did there. Um, I just walked right past. <laughs> they were like, ah, please come help us. I'm like, nope. <laughs> Hard nope. <laughs> going to the, the witch's house. Gonna go get me some stuff. Um, actually, no, it's outside here. I have to give this to the, the witch. Hee hee, thank you, young man. Come back to the shop later for something good. Hee hee. So I gave her some mushrooms. Now I'm gonna head back into the same room into the same location here, and I'm going to go and talk to the partner. It's magic powder. Yeah, that guy will heal your hit points completely. Um, I'm going to give him the B. Here, buddy. Have a pet. 
And then I'm going to pick up the uh, the blue potion. So blue potion will heal your magic and your health. It's pretty worthwhile. It's just that uh, the slots specifically are important to consider there. So if I go in and I want to heal my magic, um, I need the green potion or the blue potion. If I want to heal my health, I need the red or the blue. And it's only another 40 bucks uh, to pick up the the blue potion instead of the red one, so it's, it's pretty much worth it. There is another large purchase coming. Um, I do have to spend 100 bucks to get Kiki the monkey to open the uh, the Palace of Darkness. Ah, oh, dude's dead on the floor in here? Oh, he's not quite dead. Link, you are a second too late. Oh, man, I should have not gone to that witch's house, should I? I have failed. Zelda, the soldiers have abducted her. <laughs> They've taken her to the castle. You must find her before the wizard works his magic. Please, you're our only hope. Okay, well, I think I'm gonna call it there. Uh, I will definitely be carrying on from here. We finally got the Master Sword, completed all the first three dungeons. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you're enjoying this series, and I will see you next time.